Hey guys, Matthew here. In today's video, I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys how to make your Omniscience Stacking Tornado Shot build a lot tankier without actually breaking the bank. Now, this video stems from the fact that yesterday I made a quick teaser, if you will, of a, um, uh, of a uh, simulacrum of the final few waves on this build with, of course, a lot of investment and the end game setup. And a lot of people were like, yeah, of course, if you have Mage Blood and, you know, a few mirrors worth of investment, the build is going to walk all over the content. And while I don't necessarily believe that's true, there are definitely builds which would cost significantly more and would be able to do nothing like what this build can do, um, either in terms of damage, survivability, or speed. I do think that there is some merit in trying to make the build more tanky without necessarily increasing the price or maybe in some cases decreasing the price. So that's exactly what I did. So this is not going to be a guide on this this entire build as I already have a guide on this entire build and the different mechanics and how it works. This is more going to be a change log of what I changed from that initial guide, if you will, into the more uh, tanky version, which I do think is still going to do plenty of damage for anybody who's doing even just the most end game content such as the feared i do think that if we're talking about things like you know 1000 depth alls or if we're talking about six man hp feards that's the that's kind of the point where you might run into some issues but anything outside of that as long as you're running some maps or even killing some bosses i think that the damage is going to be more than adequate and the survivability is going to make the build feel a lot better for most of you guys um so let's get right into it first off let's look at the items uh, now, I will say, if you are on the super, super budget versions, uh, it might be a bit of a hard uh, time to actually swap into this sort of setup. And the main reason for that is because you are probably not going to have uh, enough currency to buy the sort of upgrades that you'll need, uh, the cluster jewels or the, uh, the items in general. Uh, so the super, super budget versions, I think, are just going to have to remain squishy until you, know, you get a little bit more currency. Uh, but as you improve in your investment into the build, I think this is probably somewhere a 50x version. Now, a few weeks ago, this would have been probably a 30x version of a POV. But unfortunately, uh, due to the fact that inflation happened and a lot of these items have drastically increased in price, we're probably going to be looking at around 50 or, or maybe 40, 45 if you self-craft as well. About that, if you're wondering, oh, Matt, I see that your POV has these boots, but I have no idea how to craft them. Uh, so what you'll find in the description of this uh, video is a Google document and in this Google document is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to craft every single one of the pieces of gear uh, for this build. So this is a video that I made a few days ago, but the difference here is that I've added the new pieces which were missing. So because we've ch we're changing to uh, different pairs of boots and also a different body armor, I've also added those alongside the step-by-step -step guide. All right, so looking at the items... Uh, this is just some stuff that I took off a of trade. This bow is like 6x. That's kind of what you're looking for around a thousand elemental damage with some attack speed of over 1.5, you know, pretty, uh, pretty regular stuff, but very, very solid. Quiver is just kind of a plus one arrow, bit of life, bit of multi, bit of accuracy. Uh, nothing crazy on the quiver, uh, but definitely not horrible either. Okay, so one thing that has changed is the helmet. We're going to go with a black sun crest instead of the, uh, the ass and ass chant that we used to have. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. First off, this is going to make up for a lot of the damage that we're going to be losing via some of the changes, like dropping the Hyrie's Ire, for example. Uh, and the second reason is because Tornado is not that strong paired with uh, Tornado Shot. Uh, I'm talking about the actual Tornado. Uh, because of Ballistas just putting way too many projectiles into it and not letting it actually scale. Uh, so it doesn't really get that much value. Another thing is Hydrosphere was nerfed drastically so to where you can't really chain off of it the same way that you used to. Uh, so overall, the Black Sun Crest is probably a better option. Now, I will say this, the enchant on this helmet is extremely overpriced right now. So just get yourself a decent roll of like strength, dex, and intelligence, maybe something like 46 total, and call it a day. You can worry about the enchant later on. Okay, the body armor is a massive change. We are going from Hyrie's Ire, which was a very glass cannon based chest piece, to a much more reasonable uh, chest piece, which is going to offer quite a bit of defenses. The spell suppression to replace the Hyrie's, a bit of chaos resistance in our case here, but it could also be additional attributes instead, or kind of whatever. Uh, a little bit more attributes, a little bit of life, and then we're going to also go ahead and benchcraft the chance to avoid ailments. 
Again, in the description, there's the guide on the step-by-step -step guide on how to craft this. As for the implicit, there is the effective non-curse aura from your skills. Now, this is super strong because it actually gives a lot of aura effect to things like determination and grace, defines banner, which means that we are getting more armor and more, more evasion, but also anger. Now, you'll also see the line anger has percent increased aura effect. Now, this is actually going to be, it's going to look like this while a unique enemy is in your presence. Anger has aura effect. You could also go with a non while a unique enemy is in your presence, but then it's actually going to be a lot lower than 42. Um, it's going to be like 25, which is still pretty decent. Now, one thing that I have to say when it comes to putting this chest on is that it is going to give you a lot of fire damage, potentially too much fire damage. Uh, so if that's the case, you'll have to make sure that when you do buy your bow, uh, you are still going to be okay with fitting in your Trinity. And the TLDR is that if the low end of your fire damage is higher than the, the high end of both the cold and lightning damage that you have, then you're not going to be able to, uh, to actually um, inflict brittle, or not brittle, but you're not going to be able to actually uh, have Trinity, uh, which means one of your support gems is going to be completely useless. So it's very important that you pay attention to that. Okay, it also comes with avoid ailments, as I said, because now this new tanky version of the build is going to be completely ailment immune. And this is something that I'm a big fan of ever since last league when I played my General Cry. It allows you to not have to worry about things like opening strong boxes. You'll never get frozen. Uh, you know, you'll never get shocked by things like shocked ground, which makes you take you know, crazy increased damage. All of that you can just ignore and just kind of play. Uh, the gloves are not changing whatsoever. Just look at some life, some attack speed, some suppression, pretty much mandatory. And uh, in our case here, I've got a little bit of chaos resistance. Uh, the boots are changing pretty drastically. We are going from omniscience boots uh, or onslaught boots for the endgame version to these. And these are basically double avoid ailments. You can get avoid ailments from the essence. Step by step guide on crafting those in the document down below. And also avoid ailments on the implicit for a total of something like 65-ish very, very easily. Paired with the 25 that you get on the chest and the 20 that you get on the tree, you are basically completely ailment immune for very, very little investment. And that is something which I think is going to help a lot of you guys in, in terms of how the build feels uh, and in terms of tankiness. Crystallized Omniscience is not changing the ring uh, or, or not changing. We're still going for attributes. But one thing that you'll see is I fit in an unset ring. Now, you might be wondering why an unset ring, and that is because this version of the build is extremely socket starved, as I'll uh, showcase in a bit. So we actually do need an unset uh, that, again, in the description, you'll find a step-by-step -step guide on how to craft these. Uh, but make sure that you have one of them, which is an unset ring for these sockets. String of Servitude is going to replace Cyclopean Coil because now that we're immune to elements, we don't have to worry about the freeze. Uh, so we're going with an 1818. Now this is pretty cheap and you can also get slightly worse for way cheaper as well. Uh, so this is, you know, quite a bit of damage. As you can see about 13% of our damage on our belt. Uh, so yeah. Okay, now looking at the skills, you'll see that we are definitely very started for sockets. We're going to be running Anger, Grace, Determination, and Level 3 Enlighten. Now, the cool thing about this helmet is that it gives us plus one level of socketed gems. So by putting a Level 3 Enlighten, it actually becomes Level 4 without, you know, you having to spend the extra 15x or whatever. Uh, so that is really, really fantastic and allows us to run Anger, Grace, Determination. And, of course, get an additional level, which makes them even stronger. We're going to keep running our Ballista the same way that we used to, except we are swapping in the cold damage to Inspiration. Now, the reason for that is while this is not the strongest link in the world, it makes your, your totems free. And this is a huge quality of life because you can kind of just spam your totems and there's no cost to them whatsoever. Uh, next, our main skills has, uh, has, uh, has not changed whatsoever. Our gloves, we are going to have to go with Sniper's Mark with Mark on hit now. Now, this is mandatory due to the fact that we are no longer auto-applying our, our Sniper's Mark with the Asnas helmet. Uh, Blood Rage for Leech and Attack Speed and, of course, uh, our movement ability of choice. I went with Divergent Dash because it gives you phasing, which is nice for things like Simulacrums. Uh, but you could go with whatever you want. Smoke Mine, Flame Dash, whatever. Okay, next, the last four sockets is going to be uh, some more auras and some more defenses. So precision for um, crit chance and, of course, uh, accuracy. This is a huge source of accuracy for us as we do not have any dexterity, which makes capping our accuracy quite hard. Uh, then, of course, cast from damage taken in Molten Shell. We are going away from Steel Skin, and the reason for that is because now that we have a lot of armor, uh, Molten Shell actually has more and more value. Uh, so get yourself a Molten Shell. I think a level 14 with 8 cast from damage taken is going to feel really, really good. And then finally, Defines Banner for the Holy Trinity of Defines Banner, 
grace and determination anything any build that uses these if they scale them even just a little bit are going to get quite a bit of value out of that as you can see here i'm sitting close to 30,000 evasion and armor which is plenty for basically every bit of content in the game outside of the super 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 uber end game content like for example wave 30 simulacrums this might not be quite enough but due to the fact that we have an unset ring we're going to be able to slide in a level one vitality and this is going to be very important that it's level one now you might be wondering why level one vitality and that is because one of my favorite things ever since i started using them is this watcher's eye here of live game for each enemy hit by vitality the thing is you have something like eight projectiles even on this super small budget where the only additional projectiles on your uh one single one on your quiver so even the base would be seven now every single one of these projectiles is going to split into three different secondary projectiles and all those projectiles are going to chain because of ricochet Put all that together and that's a ton of projectiles and every single every single time any of them hit you're getting 28 life gained that's crazy that's absolutely nuts we're talking about old valve pack level of leeching basically if there's something in front of you or a pack of something in front of you and you're shooting as long as you don't get one shotted you're immortal that is how much leech you're going to get from this it is basically the same as the claw node over here except instead of being 10 it's three times more upwards of 30 life gained which is absolutely insane okay now looking at the tree there's definitely been a few changes there so the first change is that uh we are going to use this small cluster here which is a two passive cluster very very cheap stuff of armor and the reason for that is we're, we're going with enduring composure now during composure will give us t an endurance charge every second if we've been hit recently so as long as you're mapping and there's like doing juice maps you're gonna get hit even if not hard you're gonna get hit all the time and this is going to make it so you have uptime on endurance charges which is a great survivability uh, layer uh the normal uh, the medium clusters are not going to change however this is i uh, this is level 92 on the pob so if you're not yet level 92 feel free to for example drop one of the mediums uh i drop i would drop this uh this one here and i would keep that one because this one is helping us cap out our crit as on a budget version we're not really going to be getting more than like eight percent brittle anyways okay uh, next, another change is that at the bottom there's another there's another cluster that you'll find, and this one has uh, is also a two passive, but for mana reservation efficiency, and it comes with uncompromising. So this is determination, fifty percent reduce mana reservation efficiency, and it's interchangeable with the one for anger instead, as they are both fifty percent auras and they're unaffected by any. Uh, we don't have any nodes like this, for example, right for anger or determination, uh, which means that you know they're exact exactly the same and neither of them come with like a good uh secondary stat for example this is thun threshold which we don't care about and i believe the anger one is like ignite duration on you and we are immune to ailments which means we're immune to ignite so that is completely useless now these are going to be absolutely mandatory in order to have enough mana now yes our tornado shot only costs one mana on this build but the thing is our sniper's mark paired with mark on hit has ridiculous mana cost as you can see 45 so it's going to be very important that we get all this stuff for example you can see if i drop compromise uh compromising i'm no longer you know going to be able to cast my sniper's mark if i drop um uh if i drop uh, i believe uh let's see the enlighten i also wouldn't be able to you know if i over level my vitality i wouldn't be able to so it's going to be very important that you follow the pob that i have here one to one i made sure that basically as long as you follow around the stats that i have in there that it's going to work now one thing that i will mention is that you will need one piece of gear with accuracy so in my case here i put it on the quiver 450 but it could also be on your gloves and it could even be on your rings there's nothing wrong with having t1 accuracy uh roll on your rings uh, but you will need one good roll of like 400 or 450 accuracy in order to get completely, uh, you know, completely 100% uh, chance to hit, um, which is very, very important on a build like this. Because, for example, the Watcher's Eye, which gives us life gain for each enemy hit, if we're not hitting targets because we don't have the accuracy to, then we're not going to be leeching. And that's going to be crazy for survivability. So essentially, this is how I took the initial 
uh, you know, Omni Shot version of the build, and I made it into a much tankier version without actually spending that much additional currency. So I really hope for the for the people who have a little bit more currency who are struggling to you know get some levels or just not die in their juiced up maps. This should be extremely helpful to you guys, and of course. You could easily swap in Headhunter for the String of Servitude, for example, if you had one. So if I went ahead and do that, of course, you're going to lose some damage, but you're going to gain a bunch of life. And well, a Headhunter is a Headhunter at the end of the day. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that either. I just put a String because it's a cheap option. Uh, and Maze Blood is obviously going to be uh, possible as well. So as I said earlier in the description down below, you'll find the document, which is the step-by-step -step guide how to craft all of these uh, items you'll also find the pob to this exact build and all uh, otherwise you'll also find another pob for my end game version and this is basically my current version i'm about 95.6 percent min max on this build there is very little left for me to actually add to the build uh so that's pretty much where this build is going to kind of kind of start to you know hit a ceiling uh and as you can see this build uh in my current state has something like fifty thousand. Uh, evasion over 42 43,000 armor uh, cap suppression 4k life uh, ridiculous amounts of damage so if you're looking to go absolutely huge on your build uh, obviously this is going to be a mage blood build and then this is the pov that i recommend and these are the sort of items that i recommend in order to make sure that you've covered all of your bases uh, so for the you know very rich people out there this is what you're going to be looking for Anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, I do want to say a huge thank you to my supporters. So Jacob, Alex, Max, Hamad, Rascola, Brandon, welcome back, Thomas, Nick, The Great Master, Alex, The Other Alex, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, Gary Fish, Naila, The Arsonist, and Bizen. So this is, of course, anyone else who wishes to remain anonymous, anyone else who has supported me in the past, and anyone else who is currently missing from the list. There's been a crazy amount of you guys lately supporting uh, over on the Patreon, and I really, really thank you for that. Again, hopefully this video is going to be helpful to some of you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the, in the next one. Peace.